Hey everybody, it's Leah here. I hope you're all doing really well during this incredibly um, challenging time. Um, I wanted to share a bit of content with you that I think is really helpful when thinking about what's happening and why we're responding to this situation the way we are. I've had a lot of clients say they feel really, really distracted. Uh, like it's really hard to get things done, to stay focused. Um, and a lot of, you know, a lot of people feeling real fear, even though they don't feel any particular fear for themselves, there's just this like sort of ominous sense of, of fear. Um, and there are a couple of things that, you know, that happen in our unconscious minds that is happening universally right now, because we as humans, we are all dealing with this, whether or not we're in Melbourne and stage four lockdown or we're, you know, somewhere else where there's, you know, they're not even wearing masks regardless of where we are with it we are all human beings having a response to something that human beings as a species don't love which is change which is change on this scale which is having something be so unprecedented in our lifetime i mean i think the spanish flu was like 100 years ago so there'd be very few people around for whom this is a precedented event right so it's it's brand new to us and and our unconscious minds don't like it when things like this happen when when we can't predict what's coming next our unconscious mind has two jobs one is to regulate our body systems and one is to protect us and when something like covid happens the the thing is is that it can't really feel like it can predict a, protect us because nothing is predictable everything there's so much change you know schools home learning and and remote working and um in melbourne at the moment we've got a curfew you know wearing masks even the details like that that kind of change it takes so much energy for us to process that G being outside of a routine takes so much energy like being on autopilot that's where we normally sort of live like we have developed systems and patterns in our life that has us be able to be on autopilot a lot of the time like you don't have to think about autopilot like when you get dressed in the morning um you don't have to think about how you're going to put your leg through your pants or how you're going to tie your you don't have to focus on that you can be thinking about other things about what you're going to do during the day or what you can have for lunch or how who's going to pick the kids up you know you can think about other things while you're doing stuff on autopilot so you've got this freedom to kind of um spread out your thinking a bit but when our life is going through so much change that there are so many new things we've got to get used to so, so many new routines you know new new patterns new ways of doing things new things we have to wear new things we have to rub on our hand you know it's like it's constant it that takes a ton of energy you know we have to focus on stuff that we normally wouldn't focus on so if you're feeling really easily distracted it's probably because when you used to have time to just sit and focus on what you were engaged in or what you needed to be doing you didn't have all these other things that you had to think about that you now have to think about because there's so much change if that makes sense so gosh one of the things that one of my messages is really to just take it easy on yourselves and know that it is actually totally exhausting to be after having to go through this kind of change mentally and then ultimately physically you know if it's taking that much of your mental space um it's it actually ends up making you physically tired as well um so when this kind of stuff happens the world's not predictable you know our major patterns are interrupted and our negative thoughts get really amped up so we really go to this place of worry well one thing about worry is that there are things in life that you when you worry about them it's good because you have some control over them and if you're worrying about it it means that there's an action for you to take so that it will help you not worry as much, right? So the other kind of worry though, is the kind of worry we do about stuff that we can't control. And when that kind of worry, like that would be um, like how many, how many people are gonna get tested positive today in Melbourne, right? That's something I physically personally can't control right now in this moment. Like I can wear my mask and I can, you know, abide by the curfew and all the rules to help in a bigger picture but at the moment i can't control the number for today so does it help me to worry about that does it help me to tune into you know the 
premiere every day to to hear the the press conference to get the numbers you know it doesn't actually it does not help me and it actually makes me spiral into probably more worry so to distinguish between the things you can control and the things you can't control and to be able to let some of these things go and to be able to if it is something you control to figure out what is the action i can take that will help me stop worrying about it i think that's a really helpful way to think about worry um, the other thing is that when something like COVID happens, we as humans, our needs shift a bit, our experience of what our needs are shift. So if you've worked with me, which most of you have, um, Maslow's hierarchy of human needs, he basically said that this pyramid represents human needs. And in order to get to this level and fulfill these needs, we need to first fulfill these needs. And these needs are like, food, shelter, clothing, safety, warmth, all of our physical needs that have us be able to even just survive and be alive, right? And if you fulfill all these needs, then you can go to this next level, which is sort of our more, um, our emotional and psychological needs. And at this level, this is where we, um, we, we have a need for connection, a need for love, um, and this is also where we need to feel in ourselves psychologically, we need to feel successful. And then if you've got all your basic needs met and then your emotional and psychological needs are met, then you can come up here, which is where he says you are sort of self-actualized. This is where you feel really fulfilled. What you're doing feels like it's a self-expression of who you are. And it's also where you feel like it's time for you to give back because you can see that you've got everything you need. And now it's like it, the natural sort of flow from that is that you want to give back to the community, to people. Um, but what happens when we're in a situation like COVID is that if you're floating around up here or you're floating around here, when we are triggered by something so change, that changes our world so much, that we see, like, do you remember seeing, I don't know if you saw that, I don't know if this was like, if a lot of people saw this, but at the, but the same time that coronavirus began, it was, like, it was like this simultaneous coincidental thing happened in China, which was where two women were fighting over toilet paper in a supermarket and it went on some social media. And, and because we saw that at the same time that we saw the coronavirus had started in China, it was like we, couldn't think rationally and we made it mean that we need more toilet paper and that there are evidence of that because there are people fighting for it in China, right? So what happens is when something like a pandemic strikes and causes us to have that level of fear about what the predictability is, we go from our happy space up here to down here where we feel like we're so tuned into our fear we're worried about our safety. You know, if you're a parent, you're worried about your children's safety. And, and we start to do things that we wouldn't normally do. So if you think about, when we go from up here to down here, it's like we get transported from one part of our brain to the other. Down here, it's all survival. It's very, it's like primitive survival mode for us, right? And that happens right in this part of your brain. It's called your basal ganglia, the back of your head. It's our primitive brain, our, our ancient brain. It's the part of our brain that, that evolved when humans were first on earth to make sure that all of our needs were met. This part of our brain is our prefrontal cortex, and that's the newest part of our brain. This is the part of our brain that, that distinguishes us from animals, the other animals in the animal world. This is where we do all of our rational thinking, our logical thought. This is where we can have empathy. This is where we, um, we, we can articulate things outside of just raw core fear-based emotions, right? But when we go from this part of the pyramid down to here, it's like we transport ourselves from this part of our brain to that part of our brain. Suddenly, we're not thinking rationally anymore. So even though we logically know that 
coronavirus is not a gastrointestinal disease. And even though we can logically say in this part of our brain that Australia produces toilet paper, America produces toilet paper, we don't have to count on getting toilet paper from China. We don't need to hoard toilet paper. So even though we can logically think that, we're back here. And once we get here, it's very easy to just kind of loop in this negative th thinking pattern. It's really hard to get yourself out of here because once you're there, you're starting to feel the body chemistry of fear, which is, you know, when your body gives you that shot of cortisol and you can feel it rushing through your brains and you, you know, your stomach's tight and your palms are sweaty and your heart's racing and you start to get that body chemistry. It's very hard to pull yourself out of that. That happens here. And, and that just, it's, it's like a terrible feeling that kind of makes you feel like you're just following something you're not really thinking. And, and that's because you're not actually thinking you're not in this part of your brain. So this is like our reptilian brain. That's the other word for it. It's where we experience fight or flight, all of our ancient habits loop there and to get yourself out of there there's actually a really cool life hack this is awesome so when you're ever feeling this level of kind of anxiousness where you can tell that you're here you can tell that you're just looping in sort of negativity and, and thinking the worst you can actually manually transport yourself out of that part of your brain into this part of your brain by doing something simply by doing something that is re that requires you to be in this part of your brain. So I'll give you an example. So this part of your brain, your prefrontal cortex, that's where we're like able to do things like count numbers, right? So if you're ever in that part of your brain where you can tell you're looping in, in that anxiousness, simply doing something like counting by 14s, say. So 14, 28, 30, 42, uh, 42, uh, see, by the time you do that, you're here. You have to be. You cannot be in this part of your brain and do that work. So it takes you from this part of your brain to this part of your brain and kind of frees you up from that thing. And then once you're there, you can say, be rational and go, I don't need more toilet paper. I've got toilet paper. We produce toilet paper in this country and COVID's not a gastrointestinal thing. So there's no need for extra toilet paper, right? That's an awesome thing to be able to do, to be able to bring yourself back here. And you can use that all over the place in life. Like seriously, you can use that, you know, if you know, you've got kids who are um, just about to do exams or something and they're kind of getting really nervous and anxious. I had a client the other day who went into an exam and he literally went here. He just got scared, he studied plenty, but he went to this part of his brain and couldn't, couldn't figure out how to get it out, out of there. And, and so that made him fear even more which then his brain goes, oh, he's pretty nervous about this. I can't see any actual danger. Or no, you know, there's no car swooping in front of him or there's no lion or tiger chasing him. I can't really see what he'd be so anxious about. So maybe I'll give him a shot of cortisol and put him in that fight or flight mode so he can figure out how to get out of there, right? So get the shot of cortisol and that makes you feel even worse. That All those physical symptoms just get amped up even more. So so being for him to go, he can like next time he'll be able to go, this is good. I've studied, but he, before that he needs to get himself to this part of the brain. He needs to go, you know, 19, 38, you know, by the time I get to two 19s, I, I'm completely here. I can't think of what even the third one is. Um, but if he gets himself to here by doing something like counting by strange numbers, or you can go through the alphabet and skip every three letters, once he's there, you can go, look, I'm ready for this. I'm actually ready for this exam. I've studied really hard. I'm going to give this my best shot. And, and that kind of thing can just change. It can change the whole experience. So look, I hope this is helpful. I hope it's been helpful to see the way our brains work and, and where we go as a sort of a default setting. Um, and you know how this can be so triggered to put us down at the bottom of the pyramid where we end up looping in these ancient cycles of fear and and anxiety um i hope that's really helpful i'm um i'm super keen to um, explore this some more and if any of you have any questions or comments or feedback thoughts you know want to explore a bit more just shoot me an email um, and I look forward to next time. Take care. See ya.